Hello everyone, this is Fallen Dice, and welcome to episode 2 of my Bee Master series with Fallen Dice. Today's episode is going to be all about getting to know your bee. Uh, we got our first hive that we had going, and where did I put my bees? There we go. We had our first hive going. He was producing honey, got our first queen. But as you can see, everything about it is unknown. We still don't know what the bee does, other than the fact that when we stick a drone and a princess in, it gives us a queen uh, with some item frames in, or some frames inside here. It sometimes produces honeycomb, and when it dies, it gives us another princess and one or two drones. But there's so much more to know about our bees, and if we really want to get into bees to the point where they start giving us all those real good items, we're going to have to find a way to get that information out. So the first thing we're going to make is what's called the bee -elizer. And the bee -elizer is going to allow us to look at the bees and, and find out a lot more about what is what that bee's makeup is. Um, and we'll get into some of the things, recessive and dominant traits, um, primary, secondary, all this kind of stuff. So first off, let's go ahead and craft ourselves a bealizer. Okay, so our bealizer is going to be made in the carpenter. And we're going to be using this recipe for tin, two glass panes, uh, redstone dust, and a diamond. Now if you look over here, we don't see it yet because we're missing a, an important part of it, and that is water. So we'll go ahead and stick this in, and there we go. Two cans of water is enough to allow us to produce one bealizer. I'm going to make two because in addition to the bealizer, we're going to be making something else as well. So we'll go ahead and take our first one. And Oh, I need to turn it on first. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So we'll let it go ahead and uh, make us our bealizer, and when it's done, I will be right back. All right, so our final bealizer is out. We can only do one at a time, so there we go. We now have two bealizers. And again, the reason why I made that is because there are two forms to analyzing your bees. The bealizer and the analyzer. Now, the analyzer is a more permanent version of our bealizer. So we'll start by making a sturdy casing. And then we're going to add four more bronze. And it goes right there. We go. Bealizer goes up there, and that's going to give us our analyzer. Now, the analyzer, again, like I said, is going to sit in a more permanent position. And there you go. Click it, add your items in there, and they come out here. But just like our bealizer, you got this little spot here. We need fuel for it to be able to give us the information we need. And that fuel is either a honey drop or a honey dew. And we get that from our bees. But it needs a little bit more work to get to that point. So the next item we need to make is a centrifuge. So we're going to make our centrifuge. Once again, need another sturdy casing. Now copper, a little bit of glass, and that's going to give us our centrifuge. The centrifuge is going to actually allow us to process this honey we've been getting. So we'll go ahead and set you right here. Continue along the uh, sim line here, doing you like to have each one of these powered separately. Carpenter, squeezer, centrifuge. We now basically have all of the main tools that we need. So we have these. The parch comb we got when we were getting our modest bees from their hives. Remember, it dropped some hives automatically, some comb. And then, of course, we have a regular honeycomb, which has been being dropped from our meadows bee. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to power this on. So we take our honeycomb, and we're going to place it here in the centrifuge, and you'll see the progress bar will now start to go up. And each different honeycomb has different products that are possible to come from it. 
your standard honeycomb is going to give you these two items here actually the honey drop and the beeswax and not necessarily both of them each time um, you may only get a honey drop you may only get a beeswax or you may get both it's kind of random how it works but uh, some of the better items you get as you move on up I'll have even have a less chance of getting them but I think it's probably like 90 percent for each of these kind of things so I think it might even be possible to get nothing but I don't that doesn't really very happen especially with your standard so you're gonna get a lot of honey drops and a lot of beeswax especially at your lower stages of bees but we're gonna let this thing run so I can get a few honey drops up and I'll be right back as we start to examine our bees alright so here we are grab the last of our beeswax and honey from the uh, centrifuge uh, now we are ready to move on so let's come back over here we'll go ahead and grab our our princess and our drone here let's take a peek and see how this is going yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and pull the queen out for the moment stick that in here to get a little bit more honey and let's go ahead and bring out our beelizer so we take our beelizer and you can see we got some different slots here this is the fuel slot here's the spot the slot you're gonna put the bee in it's gonna drop it down and it's gonna give us four different places that we can read information from so we'll start off with our queen. Actually, let's start off with some fuel. There we go. Place our queen in there. And we now have our basic information. So you see there's four things to be paying attention to right off the bat. We have our active and our inactive. Now this is, as far as the traits for this bee, these are its active traits and its inactive traits. So your reds are dominant traits, okay? That means like if you were to, to, to breed two bees and you have, say, a red um, flowers and a blue mushroom, the flowers are going to be the one that takes precedence because it's the dominant trait. Um, there is a chance, a slight chance that your recess, uh, your, your, your uh, not dominant, your, uh, I guess, recessive trait will be able to do it, but that's, almost most of the time your dominant is going to take it and in addition your active is usually going to be the one that's going to be the one that takes precedence unless like it said like say you got your active traits we got our meadows and you know shorter shortest he says slower pollen so let's say it said normal pollen or normal speed but it's blue and then over here in our inactive or secondary you have a red slowest more than this is actually going to be the trait that's going to be taken in the breeding it's going to go with the dominant the red trait even though it's in the recessive area so just kind of remember when you're doing your breeding that you're going to be using this analyzer a lot when you're trying to upgrade your your st your stats and your traits in your bees you're going to want to find bees that have stats that you want or traits that are either red that are a dominant trait or at least in the the uh, primary slot here so I know it's complicated but uh, after you do it a couple times it, it'll start to make more sense especially once you realize which what these different things do so we'll start off right up by going through what the different traits that we're seeing in this menu are Species is pretty obvious. This is what your bee is. So we have a meadows queen. So it's a meadow species. Since it's a purebred, it's going to be both in the uh, active and secondary are both going to be meadows. Now, if you start getting a hybrid, you could get like a meadows forest or something. So your active, your your dominant is going to be the meadows. Your inactive or your hybrid, the passive is going to be say the forest or the common or whichever type of bee it is lifespan again it's a pretty easy easy to understand one this is how long your bee is going to live and most specifically your queen so when you're breeding say to dro a, a drone and a princess if you got uh, one of them that has say a lifespan that's long and the other one that's short you're hoping that the 
queen you produce is going to have the long lifespan, and the drones and princess that are left from it will also have that long lifespan. Uh, so you may have to do a lot of uh, breeding and mixing to get the the lifespan you want. But the funny part about lifespans is, really, you want to keep it short up until the point that you actually get to the higher levels because the shorter the lifespan the more times you can rebreed and get that mutation you're looking for so it's kind of one of those funny stats you eventually want to have that long lifespan once you get the uh, bee you you want but while you're breeding up it's good to have a shorter one uh, speed now this is the production speed this is how fast it's going to be producing your honeycombs, your pollens, your, your different items that a bee is capable of producing. And we'll see what those are as we move further down this list. So obviously you want that to be the higher levels. You want that to get up into the normal speed or the fast speed. Um, pollen is kind of a twofold thing. Uh, one is it's the bee's effect on the area around it and the other is how far or how quickly it's going to do this. Um, so let's say uh, you, you, you've got your flowers. Oops. Uh, darn. That's not what's in here now. <laughs> you've got your flowers that you're... You can see all the normal bees have been doing. Oh, good. That's full. So sorry. you got your flowers that are surrounding your hive that you've placed. But the, as, as your bees grow, you're actually going to start spreading. I didn't place any of those flowers. Those the bees did on their own. So your pollen is how quickly your bees are going to start. Um, actually, see, what's this one? How bees? How quickly your bees are going to pollinate and spread the flower of their choice around them. In addition, if you look around the trees here, the tree breeding that has been added in as well. The pollen speed is also how quickly they're going to go around and start to crossbreed with your trees. And you can see that by all the different leaf types. So um, early on, it's not a real important stat, but it will get to that point. Flowers is the type of flower your bee is going to need to be able to, um, to work. So once your, 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 your princess and your drone combine, it gives you a queen. You have to have the right flower or it will sit there and do nothing. Its life won't move. It's not going to produce anything. So meadows is real simple. It just takes flowers. Um, some of the different bees, like your modest, are going to take cactus. Uh, your nether bees are going to take uh, uh, nether warts. You know, there's different types of bee of, of flowers, and it all depends on the bee type. And the, the cool part is, is you can actually change this. So like our tropicals require... Uh, vines and our marshes require mushrooms and they can be a pain when you start crossbreeding with say your meadows you can actually breed the flower trait into your um, your tropicals and your marshes so that they can actually use normal flowers and it makes it easier because it's a pain to try and set up mushrooms in a, in a in a bee area especially when they they only grow in certain conditions and whatnot so that's a good thing to have your fertility is how many drones your queen is going to produce when it dies. So you got here two. Some of them can do four. So I mean, it, once you get your your queen to the the, the 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 traits that you want, and you can get in that higher fertility, you're going to get a lot more drones to help you produce more. The area is how far centered on the apiary your bee will be able to pollinate the flowers around it and how nearby the flowers need to be for it to be able to work. <clears throat> so right now you can see it's a 9 by 6 by 9. So that's a pretty good range. And when it comes to the tree breeding, it's an even bigger range. The tree breeding distance is further out than the flower one. I don't know the specific, but I think it may even be like twice as far out. So that, that makes it more convenient for trees, so you don't have to have them right on the hives, because you obviously need to have, for most of the bees, direct path to the sun. And then our final thing here is going to be the effect. And your meadows don't really have an effect, but some of your other ones do. Like when you get your tropicals, they have the poison effect. And again, you've got the uh, you'll have the it'll start out as a uh, dominant trait. It'll be red. Uh, but you can 
breed it with like a modest or meadows or something which has a dominant nun and have the chance of it breeding the poison out of it and that's convenient because even though as a beekeeper eventually you're going to have your apiary suit and that protects you the other players walking by don't and it can be really annoying when you walk by a, ju a jungle hive and suddenly you're poisoned and you're you know one spider hit away from dying so getting rid of those is a good thing and we'll have an entire episode where we're going to be working about breeding in and breeding out the uh, traits that we don't want so now we're going to move down to here slot one and this is going to give us a some more uh, good information here for our bees and the first thing you're going to see is climate climate is the uh, the area that it's going to be in so our meadows the climate is normal it likes regular temperatures so the grassy the forest the normal stuff um, your wind trees are gonna want ice your jungle bees are gonna want hot you know your 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 modest are gonna want hot now the temperature tolerance is how far up or down your bee is going to be able to tolerate so you can actually breed in up one down one or both for your temperature tolerance so that your bee besides the normal climate it's used to could maybe go up to a cool or cold climate and you know, or down to and up to a warm or hot climate so you, so with like some of the bees like with the tropical you can you can breed it so that it can actually survive in a more temperate climate humidity is the amount of moisture in the air you know so this again is normal your tropicals are going to want a you know humid rainforest area so we're again going to want to be breeding that, get the up and down so that they can survive in a more temperate normal climate. That way you can keep all your bees in the same area because, you know, especially when it comes to keeping chunks loaded and things, you know, you don't want to be running all over the place with multiple hives. So you may have to do that as you're breeding around, but if you can change these, st these traits here, you can make it a lot easier on yourself. Nocturnal means that they can actually work at night. There's only a couple bees that you're going to be able to get this nocturnal from. Uh, Valiant is one of them, and I think uh, Modest might have it, but there's a couple bees. So once again, we're going to be doing crossbreeding to try and get that trait bred into our other species. Um, flyer is... Um, so whether or not the bee will be able to work during the rain or snow. And that has to do with its strength. You know, it has to be a strong flyer to be able to work during the rain and snow. And if you're on one of them servers where it just always seems to be raining, it's going to be a while before you can probably make yourself a rain machine where you can actually turn off the rain. Um, and probably even longer before you can actually get that. Eventually, if you can get this flyer bred into them, you don't have to worry about it. They'll keep producing no matter what. And cave, this means that it can work without direct access to the sunlight. So you'll be able to actually breed these guys indoors so again another cool trait to actually try to breed into some of your higher level bees but for now eh, I don't have any of that stuff at the moment now this is here is going to tell you this is a natural origin zero generation captivity so this bee is straight from a hive if I were to take out our queen you can now see he's from nature and he's had one generation in captivity. Now the natural origin means obviously that we got it from a hive. There is the ability to put a swarmer later on in your alvearies to artificially produce more hives nearby. Those will not be the natural and also as you start to mutate you're also not going to get the natural. Um, and again as far as with those swarmers I don't know you know might say still say natural origin I don't think so because I know they have a chance of dying and not leaving you any princesses or drones when you do them it's just another way of getting some extra bees to play with but again that's that's something further on and down the road for now we'll just stick with the the, the basics and the stuff that are going to be useful to us for now two we have possible produce so you can see from here this bee is going to produce honeycomb and that's it nothing else it doesn't have anything special about it no propolis no pollen none of that kind of stuff uh, as you get into higher level bees and some of the other mutations you're gonna get some pretty cool stuff here but for now all we get is honeycomb 
and if it's also if there's a specialty possible with your bee. Nothing for him, he just does honeycomb. This is going to show us the possible mutation combos that we have available. And this is because this is things I've already done. So, no, you know, normally if you were starting off, you wouldn't see anything here. But this shows that if I breed this meadows with a common, I can get this bee. With a forest, I can get this bee. With a common, I could also get that bee. With a, looks like tropical, I can get. So it's basically showing some of the possible combinations of mutations you can get. And then our last is just going to give you some, and I've never really learned a lot, but it shows it's from the kingdom of animals. It's an insect from the order of the Hemoptera family, genus, species. You know, this is kind of just some extra information for you that doesn't really have anything to do with the actual bee breeding, but it's there. So those are our things. Now, like I was saying before, we can also do it from here. But from here, we need something else. We need actual honey. We have honey drops right now, but not honey. So we need to go to our squeezer. And I don't know how many it's going to take. We'll see if this is enough here. Oh, we got to turn you on as well. Turn you off. And as you see here, we're still working with cans. But uh, we can actually fix that right now. If we take our beeswax and we go over here to our crafting table, Let's see, I think it's just like that. No, it's just like this. There we go. Three beeswax will give you four wax capsules. So now the items you're getting from your bees are actually giving you a useful product other than, you know, what we're doing to figure out what types of bees we have. So we can actually come over here now. We don't need the can because we now have wax capsules. And slowly this thing is going to, oop, you know what? It's not going to do it when I have seed oil in there. So we need to break this and reset this. It's the only thing I wish there was a way to empty out the items that were that are already in a squeezer. Because it'll look like it's empty sometimes. And so you go ahead and stick something in. I actually wasted a honey drop in there. You can see I don't have enough honey drops to give me enough honey to fill up one capsule. So we're going to go back to our our main base and I should have some down here I think uh, no nope. what about over here uh, there we go I'll we'll just take one honey capsule and all that other stuff you see there that is that is the cool stuff that we are eventually going to get to but for right now that is that is the goal. <laughs> so let's head back up here again. And now we'll go over to our analyzer. And we put in our honey capsule. So now it says there's nothing to analyze. So we've analyzed these two, but not this one. So we'll go ahead and place him in here. He automatically gets moved into this. And you can see it takes a while for it to analyze. So there's pros and cons to the analyzer. Usually when I'm breeding, I'm going to use my beelizer because it's quicker for me to get my information and more convenient. Now, however, if you're doing some automated stuff at a later point, you can actually put piping into this and stuff so that your your apiary, once it outputs the, uh, the bees, can send them over to here to be analyzed and then on its way out through an apiary's pipe, you can then route them so you can send your purebreds one way, your other things. There's uses for it. Um, again, normally, I, I'm almost always going to just use the Beelizer for its simplicity. I don't have to go through and squeeze my honey. I just put the honey drop straight into it. And you can see also here, a byproduct of the squeezer and the honey is propolis. And there is some uses for propolis at a later date, but we're not going to go into it at this time. So let's go back. We're going to put our queen back in, let her continue doing her job here. There's one more tool here as far as knowing our bees that we're going to do in this episode, and that is the habitat locator. And this one's a real simple one to make. It just takes four bronze ingots, 
and one redstone and that's going to give us our habitat locator now the habitat locator is going to tell you exactly which biomes your bee is able to survive in um, unfortunately I think I used up all my honey drops <laughs> so I may have to run and grab those again real fast so hold on I will be right back alright so here we are got some honey now and here's our habitat locator and this is the uh, what you will see when you open it up and you can kinda look in here and tell the different biomes that are in the pictures here so we're gonna go ahead and put in our honey drops and we're gonna take that Meadows Princess that we've been looking through all of our other information and here's what we find out this Meadow Princess will be able to work in an ocean plains meadows forest extreme hills and it looks like the end I'm not sure why it only shows part of the end but eh. over here we got the desert here is our rainforest that would be like our taiga and you know colder mountain regions marshy um, snow plains a uh, mushroom the nether so these are the possible areas that it can do now if you have it in here and we go ahead and close this it should supposedly it's supposed to point you to the area that you can basically breed it the closest area but pretty much anywhere around here I can breed this bee so I think that's why it's kinda of going haywire um, the only time I really use this is when I got like the up down or I'm trying to find out if if I can breed something in a certain area or not I've never really used it to sh show me where I could go to like you know to follow the uh, the compass needle but like when I'm doing when I was trying to get the uh, tropicals to be able to breed and work in my normal climate I would use this to put in there and I could see if it could at least work in the marshy or the plains or the jungle and that helped me to go around to my different bases as I was um, doing the work to breed the uh, specific traits in and out of my bees but that is where we're gonna we're gonna end this one here so basically three new tools centrifuge bealizer actually four I guess bealizer analyzer and you can see now that the uh, the bee would come over to here and then we can look at it now and see what's what what it is um, and of course our habitat locator so with these four tools here we know everything that we need to know about our bee to continue on in the process of breeding so in our next episode we're going to take all this information we've now learned and we're going to use it to get the statistics or the traits that we want in our bees in them and take the ones we don't want out and in addition we're gonna go ahead and possibly maybe we'll do our first mutation I, I, I wanna make that almost its own episode you know as we start to work through the process of that so uh, for sure though we'll, we'll start working on breeding in and out traits and and getting a better bee than what nature wanted to give us so thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this I will see you next time